friends, it's Allie Dalzler here today with you um, for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. And you're going to have to excuse my voice, I've got a little bit of a head cold, um, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, today I'm going to tell you all about the frame punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. This is such a versatile and useful tool for crafters of all kinds. Um, and you can make all kinds of things with it, um, frames for card making, for scrapbooking, for pocket pages, planners, um, all kinds of things. Today I wanted to show you um, how to use the tool to make some um, photo magnets for the holidays. These make great gifts for uh, teachers, for grandparents or aunts and uncles that are far away, um, for friends. Um, they're great stocking stuffers, so I'm really excited to show you how to make these. They're really easy and lots of fun. So first of all, I want to show you how this punch board works, kind of give you a little tour of the board. Um, so this is like many of the other punch boards. There's a punch feature and then there's also a cutting feature. Um, this board also has some pegs and holes with measurements, and that is just to help you measure the width of your frame that you want to make. Um, so <clears throat> um, what I like to do, I'm going to show you first of all how to do this. This is a three by four frame, so you're going to cut your paper down to three by four, um, and this is basically this frame here that I'm going to show you. This is kind of a Polaroid style frame where the bottom it, um, width is a little bit larger than the other three sides. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. Um, and first of all, when I'm punching a frame, I like to start by rounding the corners. And the reason why I like to do that is because it works better when your paper is not cut out, when the center isn't cut out, when it's nice and sturdy, I mean, it's a full um, block of paper. So what you're going to do to cut or to round the corners is you're going to move these little things into the bottom pegs and, and you'll see there's a, a little bit right here. You may not be able to see, but it says corner rounder and there's an arrow showing these little holes right here. So put your pegs in there on both of these if you want to have um, the corners rounded. Okay, so we're just going to put it in there, make sure that it lines up evenly on both sides and we're just going to punch and you'll do that all the way around on all four sides. Now if you don't like rounded corners, if you prefer the straight corners, you can do that too. You can just skip this part. Okay, so once you've rounded your corners, you're going to move these to the one quarter inch or 0.25 mark. And we're just going to pop them in there. And this is going to do the top corners, these two corners of your frame, because we want both sides of the corner to be a quarter inch. You're going to flip it over and punch the other side. All right, so now we're going to work with these two corners on the bottom, and those need to be different widths. One side needs to be a quarter inch, and one side needs to be three quarters of an inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this one at a quarter inch, and we're going to move this one to three quarters of an inch, or 0.75 inches. Now you're going to have to think carefully when you place this in, you know, realize that this is where the wider um, border is going to be. So we're going to pop that in there, punch, and then flip it over and punch again. And now you can see we've got the quarter inch frame here, here, and here, and the three quarter inch frame, or border, I meant border, <laughs> down here. So now we're going to move over to the cutting side of the board. And we've got the blade that's typical of the punch boards with the notch that you fit into the guide here, and then the blade right there, the cut cutting part. So we're going to work with one quarter inch first with these uh, more narrow sides first. So I've put this bar into the 0.25 or one quarter inch pegs right here. So we're going to lift the arm and push that down. Now just be aware this is not a magnetic arm like some of the punch boards have. Um, so it's, you know, it's just a little bit different. Just remember you're going to need to hold that down. Fit your notch into the track and you're going to make sure that you just cut, here, let me move the arm, you're just going to cut from here to here, so be careful that you don't let your blade go past and cut into your frame, okay? So we're going to place that in there carefully, slide just a little bit, and then we're going to lift the arm, move it around to the top side, and do the same thing. Just a little short cut, one more time. Okay, so now you can see we've cut that. Now we need to cut a three-quarter inch piece there. So we're going to put this arm down, move this back to 0.75 or three quarters of an inch, and then we'll slide this in, line it up there, and just use our blade to slice the rest of that excess right out of the center. 
Um, now here's a little tip that makes a darling tag. So save that. You can use that on a future project. Um, but there's your frame. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now let me show you how to do a square frame with equal margins or equal borders, just like this one. So this one's a little bigger so you can see how it works, but this is four by four. Now let's say we want to do a half inch border. So I'm going to move this to 0.5 or a half inch and move this one to 0.5 or a half inch. Now this time I am not going to round my corners so that you can just see how that looks um, with the completed frame. So I'm just going to punch all four corners. No need to move them if you're doing equal sides on the borders. And now all we need to do is move this bar to 0.5 or half inch and slide this in. And we're just going to cut all four sides and get that excess out of the center. Okay, so there you go. That's the idea. Let me just get this out of the way. Um, and you can make, again, just, I mean, any different kind of frames. Um, and let me tell you a tip too. If you want to cut, um, this is six inches, but if you want to cut beyond six inches, if you want to cut an eight by eight frame or a 12 by 12 frame for a scrapbook page, just use the punch part of the board and punch out your corners. And then you'll use your paper trimmer or a pair of scissors to cut out the center of the larger papers. So you can use this board all the way up to 12 inches if you want to. All right, so now a little tip on putting the frames together. Um, if you do round your corners, our crocodile corner chomper, um, the one that has the one quarter inch and half inch, that is the perfect size for to match these frames. So I'm gonna use my quarter inch side, and this is just some chipboard, and I'm just gonna pop those real quick to round them so that when I put this together, it matches up with the rounded corners on my frame. Um, and here's another tip. If you want to be able to swap out your photos in these frames, just put adhesive on the three sides and leave the top um, so that it's not adhered to the background. And then you can just slide photos in and out if you'd like to change them. And you can put some magnet, um, self-adhesive magnets on the back and put those on your fridge or wherever you'd like to put them on display in your craft room or whatever. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how versatile and useful this tool is. I mean, it's it's exciting. You know, you can, you can make frames for anything. You can, you know, I love to use these even without photos. They make great frames, um, as you know, layers on your cards. Um, you can make tags with them and just put a piece of pattern paper inside. That looks super cute. So lots of ideas for this great tool. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allie Dosdell for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. Mm -hmm.